Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, first, just want to say thank you for joining us to learn a little bit more about the liquid-cooled bus bar assembly. Uh, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Hal Lockett. I'm a system architect at T Connectivity. Uh, joining me on stage on the far left is Lily Zhang, uh, product manager for bus bars at T Connectivity, and along with us is Dimitri Shapiro, a mechanical engineer from Meta. And although we couldn't be on stage with us today, we also wanted to acknowledge John Fernandez, a thermal engineer at Meta, for his contributions. Just to quickly go over our agenda, a little bit of background in the ORV3 high power rack specification. We're going to share a little bit of information on the liquid cool bus bar design itself, uh, some thermal simulations and physical testing data, uh, a little bit of information on some of the testing and safety that we're going to do, and then finally a call to action. Uh, so first, a little bit of background in the ORV3 high power rack specification. Uh, really, if we take a step back and look at what's going on in industry right now, Rack level power requirements are increasing, frankly, at an unprecedented rate. Uh, chips are carrying more power than ever before, and density is also increasing. So more high power chips are going into the rack, so the rack power levels are going up quite a bit. Uh, just last year, Meta introduced the ORV3 HPR spec. Uh, at the time, it enabled up to 93.5 kilowatts with uh, air cooling, and they've now announced that it can enable up to 140 kilowatts uh, with an air-cooled thermal solution. So. Um, what we're also seeing, though, is future AI workloads uh, are going to significantly exceed these power levels. So this is a good lead into the chart that we have on the right. So I would point everyone to the two bars on the far right of the chart. So what we're projecting is by 2027, we're going to enable 800 kilowatts at the rack level. And before the end of the decade, we're going to cross the one megawatt threshold. So right around 2029, we're projecting 1.2 megawatts at a rack level. Going back to the chips themselves, these new higher power uh, GPUs and CPUs um, pretty much all require liquid cooling at this standpoint. So that's important because all of the hardware, all of the condensers, the manifolds, all of the piping that you need, um, that's already present at the rack level. So it's really not, not that much of a stretch from an engineering standpoint to be able to tie a liquid cooled bus bar uh, into this already existing infrastructure. Uh, the last thing that I would want to mention is that the main advantage of the liquid cooled bus bar is a significant increase in current carrying capacity within the same footprint size. So we're projecting you can carry right around five times the current of an air cooled solution in the same size. And now I'll turn it over to Dimitri to talk about design considerations. All right, thank you, Hal. Uh, so when we look at the design of the liquid cooled bus bar, uh, there's a lot of things at play here. One, you know, everyone is scared when you, when you introduce liquid and power together. Um, so we'll go over that a little bit later. But some of the things that we want to consider, number one is temperature rise. Um, so of course, there's a Yule requirement of 30 CT rise across your connectors. And when we do a lot of our analysis and simulations, uh, as well as testing, that's kind of like the threshold that we uh, look at for temperature rise. Uh, and then voltage drop. So we have a requirement of 0 0.1 uh, volts max voltage drop across the entire bus bar. Uh, and then, of course, mass, uh, as I mentioned, Previously in on the HPR talk, the HPR bus bar is about 80 kilograms. Um, so we want to reduce mass as much as possible. And for certain applications where, say for example, a traditional bus bar um, can, or sorry, an HPR bus bar gets you, you know, about 140 kilowatts, you can get 140 kilowatts almost out of a standard ORV3 bus bar if you liquid cool it, which gives you a significant weight savings uh, for your rack. Uh, serviceability, we, we designed this with quick connects in mind for the hoses, so we want to make sure that this is serviceable in case there's any issues. Uh, safety, like I mentioned, absolutely no contact between liquid and copper. We never want that. Uh, so of course, the requirement is to do a lot of reliability testing uh, to make sure that never happens. Um, that kind of goes on to leakage as well. And then the cold plate design is a huge factor. Right? How, how do you actually distribute your liquid? Um, so we want to maximize cooling capacity, but also make sure that it's a manufacturable cold plate and it's a high quality cold plate. And then the thermal interface material, that, that's basically between your cold plate and your copper, how do you transfer the heat from your copper into the cold plate, but also make sure it's electrically insulated uh, because we don't want any shorting between the two. Uh, so that's also a big concern as well as the ease of assembly of this tin material uh, between the two. And then host connections, we want to standardize um, as well as you know, make it easy to assemble and have a robust supply chain of vendors that can support those hose assemblies, the quick connects, and all of that. And then also rack mounting. Okay, so quick overview of the design of the liquid cool bus bar. So on the right hand side, you'll see 
we have a big copper piece and a profile that's similar, pretty much the same as uh, standard HPR bus bar. Um, and then through that, we have a, basically a, a channel that's cut out and a cold plate that sits in that. Uh, and then thermal interface material between your cold plate and your conductor. And then at the top, one of the designs that we have is uh, basically a loop between the conductor, between the cold plates on the negative bus bar and the positive bus bar. Uh, and that's done with a quick connect and a hose to connect the two. So that way, uh, you basically just need to have inlet and outlet connections at the bottom of your bus bar without having an extra ones at the top. But there is um, optionality to have that if you do need it. Okay. And then mounting points are pretty much the same as on HPR, uh, which we mentioned uh, a couple talks back. So on the bottom, you have eight mounting screws, and then at the top, you have four mounting screws. Um, and then one thing I want to point out is comparison between standard ORV3 and then liquid cool HPR bus bar. It's significantly deeper, significantly larger, um, and that's how we can get some of the power capacities that we're going to talk about later. Okay. Uh, and then the kind of the overall design of the connections. So you can see at the bottom, uh, there's basically a Parker Pushlock 82 barb connection that's coming out of each conductor, and then a Parker 807 Pushlock EPDM hose, and then uh, just a UQD, standard UQD04 socket. And that can be connected to either your manifolds, your facility water, um, it's very flexible. In the future, we are gonna look at having the hose be kind of a separate assembly, so you can just pop it into your bus bar. Um, and you can have various hoses for different applications, so yeah. And then, uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, there's two options for how you want to run liquid uh, for connections to your manifold. You can just have uh, inlet and outlet at the bottom, and then a, basically a U-channel at the top, or you can have your inlet and outlet at the bottom, and then also inlet and outlet at the top. Okay, then I'll hand it over to Lily. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Lily Zhang from uh, TE, Product Manager for Liquid Cooled Bus Bar. Uh, I would like to share uh, Liquid Cooled Bus Bar portfolio TE can offer. As you can see, uh, this uh, all of the chart. Uh, in term, we have developed three types of the Liquid Cooled Bus Bar in terms of the different uh, rack power level. Uh, and we also selected uh, two air cooled bus bar as a benchmark to show what is the benefit and advantage from Liquid Cooled Bus Bar. Uh, the one is a um, 36 kilowatt air cooled bus bar. The other one is a uh, HPR one's um, 40 kilowatt uh, uh, HPR bus bar. For um, 36 kilowatt air cooled bus bar, uh, we use the uh, exact same form factor for the liquid cooled bus bar, but it can achieve uh, 200 kilowatt. Um, we also have the showcase with this uh, 200 kilowatt uh, liquid cooled bus bar at TE booth. Um, unbelievable, that is a word I heard a lot in past two days uh, when people saw this uh, you know, liquid cooled bus bar is running at our booth. And also look at uh, you know, e even with the same uh, you know, weight. Um, if for us, the, you know, 200 kilowatt uh, liquid cooled bus bar is just like a baby in a liquid cooled bus bar product family. And we, we can also support up to 750 kilowatt if we utilize the same uh, form factor as uh, HPR 140, k, uh, 140 kilowatt. Um, there is a showcase with uh, uh, 92 kilowatt or uh, 140 kilowatt HPR rack at uh, Meta booth. Uh, so you can see how is that HPR 140 kilowatt uh, liquid uh, vertical bus bar, air cooling bus bar look like. We have the exact same form, form factor to upgrade to liquid cooling, uh, you know, liquid cooled bus bar. Um, as, as you can see, you, you know, uh, some people also ask me if that uh, 750 kilowatt is the maximum uh, power capacity the liquid cooled bus bar can achieve. The answer is no. We never uh, stopping exploring the higher power with the liquid cooling bus bar. Actually, we are working on the next generation, and probably I can have some answer or more updates uh, next year. Um, uh, let's take a look at uh, the thermal simulation for these three types of the liquid cooled bus bar. Um, we put we suppose the um, you know power shelf will be put on the both top and bottom. Uh, look at the first column, 200 and uh, 400 kilowatt. 
um, as Di uh, Dimension mentioned that, uh, you know, voltage drop and uh, temperature rise are the major two um, factors we need to consider when we define the, uh, you know, liquid cooled bus bar power rack, uh, in, you know, level. For this 200 and 400, as you can see, it's similar logic. The T rise is uh, still a lot of a buffer. And also, but uh, consider the you know voltage drop uh, limitation we defined as a 0.1 uh, volt. Then we also still de define those two, uh, you know, like a 36 kilowatt to support uh, uh, 200 kilowatt with liquid cooled bus bar. Uh, for the 750 kilowatt, as you can see, the, we still have a lot of margin for the voltage drop, but uh, for the temperature rise, it's uh, very close to the 30 degree as we defined uh, for liquid cooled bus bar. We selected uh, 750 kilowatt liquid cooled bus bar uh, to build uh, functional samples and run all of the testing uh, to verify if the design is exactly the same or close to the, our simulation. Here show you know the how is a testing setup. We put two power cells at the bottom. Uh, each of them can run maximum of 5,000 amps. Uh, actually, we run the two scenario for this uh, you know TRS testing. One is uh, put the power uh, cells at the bottom. And we we call that one set, and we also run the other scenario. We put that uh, both side top and the bottom. So for this uh, testing, the purpose one of the purpose is that uh, we want to uh, verify what is the maximum power this liquid cooled bus bar can achieve. And uh, it, uh, you can see we tested at uh, 6,000 amps, 8,000 amps, and uh, 10,000 amps. Uh, it could make us to, uh, you know, make a T rise curve, and also for 8,000 amps, the testing result is uh, quite close to 750 kilowatt, and also uh, the T rise is uh, uh, close to, uh, you know, 30 degree. But the difference is that uh, for our this testing. We didn't, uh, you know, consider the power distribution. As you can see, we didn't put any IT load along this bus bar, um, and also um, for next scenario so testing, we put, uh, you know, power cells at the top and the bottom, short the power and return in the middle. Uh, the spot, the black spots, uh, stand for that, uh, you know, measurement point, and this uh, is uh, quite similar as a really use case as we run right now. And as you can see, the T rise also is uh, quite close. Uh, you know, we also run uh, like uh, you know different uh, current rating, and also it uh, verified it's uh, for 750 amp uh, for, for 750 kilowatt is definitely no no doubt to support that. Besides the T rise, we also uh, you know testing the voltage drop. As you can see, uh, you know, similar as a uh, uh, T-rise testing setup, we also test both the, you know, scenario. One is a one side, the other is a both side uh, split at the top and the bottom. Uh, the testing result I'll show the same, re uh, same similar, uh, you know, data as we simulation data. Uh, the same uh, condition is, uh, you know, is different from. Actually, this is a worst case because you know we didn't uh, consider the power uh, distribution along the bus bar to the IT load. Uh, that's why we think we still have the, some margin uh, for this uh, liquid cooled bus bar. And then I will hand over to. Thank you, Lily. So in addition to some of the uh, physical testing that we've just done, as well as the thermal simulations, we wanted to share a little bit of information about a couple of key tests for this product. So two things that are gonna be very important are number one, high pot testing from a safety perspective. And obviously when you have liquid flowing uh, so close uh, to this, we wanna make sure that there's no leakage. So there's a couple of different leakage tests. So for the high pot test, there's a little bit of information on the testing limits, uh, 2.4 kilovolts DC uh, with a 10 second ramp and a 10 second hold. And there's also a 10 microamp leakage current limit. And right below, there's a little bit more information on the testing order that we do. Uh, for the gas leakage test, there's a nitrogen pressure test in addition to a, a helium micro leak detection test that we perform as well. Uh, next on a call to action. So we are going to be developing a design spec that we will release to OCP in the near future. And also, as Lily mentioned just a few minutes ago, uh, we're going to continue to refine this design to see how much more current we can carry. Um, below, there's for those of you that want more information, uh, we're including Lily's contact information, and also uh, there's some links to OCP, Rack and Power, and the, the Cooling Environments Project Wiki. Thank you.
questions? I really am to this vector one from Virgil. Interesting, the very amazing deliver the five times uh, compare current, uh, you know, uh, nature coding in the bus bar. But I have one question is because I'm the architecture of the overall, you know, for the piece of component for the. So now the Cinch bus bar is can carry, you know, five times. But uh, you know, very for the AIs, you know, uh, rack, we have a very limit for the power. For example, current uh, in total, you know, uh, six U, right? Six U, if you consider about the, all the six U, divided to each PSU, then how can you come up a connect solution for the PSU, single PSU deliver? This is going to be a challenge because all the bus bar, single bus bar, you can do the, you know, liquid cooling, but in the smaller one U, and for the each PSU, this is going to be crazy, maybe five, uh, more than 400 and 500, and then deliver them also from the circuit board to the output, the, the, the each PSU, uh, to, to, to all, Oh, 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 the shelf. This is my concern. Currently, it looks like this uh, critical, right? You agree, Lily? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, actually, yeah, besides the bus bar, T also continue working on the how to upgrade the bus bar connector to achieve the high current rating. Uh, we also uh, released the BB2000 uh, connect output connector, bus bar connector, which means uh, 1000 in and 1000 out. Uh, we also have the sample on, at our booth. Uh, you know, if you have any interest, in, you can stop by to, to take a look at that. And also, uh, you know, if we use the liquid bar, cooled bus bar, we can also benefit from the liquid bus bar to increase or upgrade or increase the capacity of the bus bar connector. For example, for BB2000 connector, we also run the simulation. Uh, even without any change, we can have uh, like uh, two or three times of the power capacity increase. That's why, you know, the vertical bus bar, uh, you know, liquid cool bus bar is not only benefit for the whole power distribution or delivery, it will also benefit uh, with the connection, like a uh, connector standpoint. Yeah. yeah. In addition, you know, I, right now, I've, uh, sorry, uh, I have one project. It's a single PSU is still, I'm, I'm, you know, still in the, the Air Force, you know, uh, design. Then it's going to be 20 kilowatt. So for a single PSU, please contact me. Then we can work out if you have a match deliver of the co uh, connect solution because this for us one U, then the 20 kilowatts for e each single PSU. This is going to be critical for us. I can even. I tried to contact uh, some connector uh, solution uh, provider, but uh, so far it's challenging. Thank you. Image. I was just going to mention, in addition to connectors, there's always options of like bolted bus bar connections from your power shelf to the bus bar, um, as well as you know, there's been talk about side power racks and transferring power over between bus bars. So there's many options being discussed right now as well. Okay. Yeah. I know. Thank you. Any other questions?